At the LG G6 launch event, my girlfriend, who was my camera woman back then, had a really good question. Why didn't any of the modular smartphones, including the LG G5, become successful? And I didn't have a very good answer back then, but I did some thinking, I did some research, and I think I have one now. I'm Martin from TechAlta, you're watching the 17th episode of the Story Behind series, and let's talk about modular smartphones. Modular smartphones sound like the dream, right? You can customize the look and feel of them, you can mix and match the components to supercharge your phone, you can add new batteries at will, or even add some crazy new functionality to it. Who wouldn't want that, right? And yet, modular smartphones disappeared just as quickly as they came. In 2016, LG, Motorola and Google all announced modular smartphones, but none of them have fared particularly well. Google's Project Aura, which had little universal slots on the back of it, was cancelled indefinitely without giving any sort of explanation. The LG G5, a phone where you could snap modules to the bottom of the device, was called a failure multiple times by LG themselves and the company completely gave up on modularity with the G6. And Motorola, whose modules simply snapped onto the back of the Moto Z, didn't completely give up on the concept just yet, but also didn't sell in large enough quantities for it to be called a huge success. Success. Which begs the question of why. If modularity is such an exciting concept indeed, I mean everyone from MKBHD to Cold Fusion was raving about it, and I have to admit I myself was quite pumped about it as well, then why aren't we all hot swapping camera modules and throwing projectors on the backs of our phones? But here's the thing, when I sat down to write the script for this video, I thought I'd do some research, figure out why modularity has failed in the past, and how some company could turn that around in the future. But the more I thought about it, the less I could see that sort of a turnaround happening anytime soon. So let's break this down. Theoretically, the benefits of modularity could be expandability, future-proofing, customization, some kind of cost savings, and finally, repairability. Let's look at those one by one. Expandability means that you could adjust your phone's feature set to the situation that you are in. Movie time, throw on a projector. Music time, throw in a speaker. Camera time, throw in a zoom lens. You get the idea. And this is the aspect that Motorola, Google, and LG seem to advertise the most. After all, it makes for great demo videos. The catch? You can already expand your phone's feature set just as well without these modules. That's what external peripherals are for. Need better sound from your phone? Just buy a Bluetooth speaker. Need extra battery life? Just get a phone with a replaceable battery or use a power bank. And for the more sci-fi stuff like special scanners, infrared sensors, mini projectors or 360 cameras, those don't really need to be parts of your phone. Instead of an extra mechanical connector, they could just use your USB or a lightning port or your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. They don't make your phone bulky, they're universal, meaning that you can use them with many devices, not just one specific phone, and they even cost about the same as the modules they compete against. Future proofing does sound really good on paper. Much like with PCs you can upgrade yourself, the idea here was that you wouldn't have to buy a whole new phone just because you want to upgrade a single component. You want faster storage or a stronger CPU? In a computer you can just buy it and swap it out. But because smartphones have to be much more compact and integrated, even modular phones don't let you upgrade any of the core components, including the motherboard, the CPU, the GPU, the RAM, all of the antennas and radios, or even the display, so they aren't actually future-proofed. Which brings us to customization, and I realize this is a really sensitive subject. Ask any hardcore Android or PC geek and they'll tell you that the ability to fine-tune every little detail of their device is really important to them. And yes, I think the ability to customize the device might be a good selling point for some people, but I think history has shown us time and time again that the vast majority of users just doesn't care about it. I think most people actually like having what everyone else has. Like for example, a grey iPhone, a black Galaxy, or a silver MacBook, often without even changing the default wallpaper. There have been projects like Moto Maker which let users customize their phone even in the past, but none of them ever really made a big dent. Customization, I think, is a niche thing. 
Cost savings can be achieved with modular PCs because there's no need to keep things particularly compact or power efficient. But for modular phones, being compact and efficient is crucial. The core parts have to be just as sleek as on regular phones, and on top of that, modularity just adds an extra layer of connectors, rails, pins, magnets and whatnot, which all actually drive the costs up. And that brings us to our final potential benefit, which is repairability. And I'm kind of torn on this one, because even though I have dismissed all the other benefits quite easily, I really like the idea of repairability. And while Google's, Motorola's and LG solutions didn't do much to help this at all, there's a company called Fairphone who did take this idea quite seriously. Their focus is on social and environmental sustainability by making smartphones that can be taken apart and repaired with common tools and spare parts that can be bought directly from the company. Smash your screen, just swap it out for a new one. Battery dead, swap it out. You get the idea. Add to this that the company uses carefully selected components to minimize its negative influence on the environment, and Fairphone has a very noble value proposition, though like most mission-driven organizations, not one that I think would reach anyone beyond a small niche. Don't get me wrong, I am all for what Fairphone represents, I wish more mainstream smartphone makers would adopt some of their practices, and unlike the other modular phones we have seen so far, Fairphone actually delivers on its promise, but again, I doubt that most people will be willing to pay the extra money and suffer the extra bulk in exchange for a responsible but inferior phone. So the average user doesn't really want a modular smartphone. They tend to be clunkier, thicker, less attractive, and usually more expensive than their regular counterparts, all while offering very few tangible benefits. So it's no wonder that they didn't really catch on. Sales numbers show that most consumers seem to value things like sleek designs, premium materials, as well as waterproofing over even the most basic sorts of modularity, like having a removable battery, for example. The lead engineer of Project Ara himself said this, when we did our user studies, what we found is that most users don't care about modularizing the core functions. They expect them all to be there, to always work, and to be consistent. Well, that is about as clear as it gets. The other side of this problem is that most companies that have the volumes and the cultural weight to make modular smartphones a thing, like Apple and Samsung, have no incentive to do so. They would much rather continue to sell you a complete $800 smartphone every two years than spend a ton of money developing a solution that will let you extend your phone's life with $20 modules. And while smaller competitors like Motorola or LG might want to upset the market, they just can't get enough third-party hardware makers to join their platforms for it to become a real ecosystem. And so with most consumers and most smartphone makers uninterested in modular smartphones, I don't really see how they could become mainstream anytime soon. Now, I'm not saying I wouldn't like to see some elements of modularity succeed. I'd especially like to have repairable smartphones, just like the Fairphone. And I'd really like to have replaceable batteries back. But I think for at least the next couple of years to come, most people will simply buy sealed, gray, compact, non-modular slabs. So what do you think? Do you agree? Or do you think I missed some super impressive use case? Let me know in the comment section below or tweet it at me at TechAltarm. I read those. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, follow me on the social media channels. I'm TechAltarm pretty much everywhere and I post a ton of cool behind the scenes sort of stuff there. If you want to see more from the Store Behind series, uh, past episodes are somewhere here. Future episodes will come straight into your inbox if you hit the subscribe button, and especially if you hit the bell button next to the subscribe button, then you even get notifications. Coolest thing ever. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.